Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about three common mistakes I see a lot of beginning players make in their pool game that's stopping them from pocketing balls, running out racks, whatever the case may be. Now I'm doing the intro like this because I have a couple of updates I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of, and I know it's kind of last minute, but I still wanna get it out there. The beginning of August, I will be on two rosters playing in the APA National Championship, first of which will be APA Masters team. I have a team gonna be there, and that play starts on the 7th, and it goes through the 10th. And then I also am on a captain's team, and that goes from the 9th of August through the 11th. So I'll be out there an entire week. I will try to give updates um, through YouTube um, so that maybe, if you're there, I can get to meet some of my fans, okay? I apologize also for the fact that I've been very busy in my personal life with my other business um, and I haven't been posting regularly. That has to change just for me in general. I just want to do it myself because I love doing these videos um, and I hope you guys are enjoying them as well. So I'm going to try to be more consistently posting. Um, so stay tuned to see more content. Okay, um, let's jump right into the video. All right, guys, part number one moving around while you're down on your shot. Such a such a common mistake I see so many times from players is what they'll do, I'm just gonna put this in straight for us now, and what they'll do is, let's say they're coming from another shot, they shoot the next shot, and then what they're doing is they're already coming down on their shot before they even get to the ball, and then they're moving around until they see the shot, and then executing. Now, this, will work on shots like this because it's easy to see it straight in you almost don't even have to shoot at the eight ball you can just shoot straight at the pocket and the ball is gonna go right but one of the things is we have to imagine now that this is a difficult shot okay one of the things that you want to make sure that you're always doing as a pool player is aiming while you're standing the, this is such an important concept the the shot process actually doesn't happen while you're down on the shot. The execution happens while you're down on the shot, but seeing the shot, visualizing where the cue ball is gonna go, how, uh, what English you're gonna put on it, all of that stuff happens while you're standing behind the ball. This is where we need to take the most time when we're preparing for a shot. So let's imagine I have now maybe even a little bit more difficult shot for this three ball here. I'm not just gonna swing into the shot and and start moving around like this, it's much harder to see your line. When I, when I go to execute a shot, all of my aiming happens while I'm up here. I visualize what English I'm gonna use. In this case, I'm just gonna pocket the ball. Okay, I visualize the line that my cue ball needs to travel. I'm gonna pop down into my shot from here. And then once I'm here, I'm set. I don't need to move left, right, or anything like that. I see my line, I get down on the shot, you should even be able to do this while one stroking these shots and be able to pocket that ball without any issues. Okay. Now, one of the ways to help get your body in line so that you don't have to move around is actually practice just lining up on a shot. And one of the best ways that you can do it is you can use these edges because these are straight lines to help practice that. There's also a straight line on the table. This is one I'm gonna be using for us right now. It's gonna be easy to see. Um, at least a little bit. It's going to be off center, but it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand behind my shot path, my shot line, which is this uh, straight line here. I'm going to drop into my shot. Now, one of the things is making sure that everything's in line, right? So I want my back foot, I want my back hand, everything in line. And if I can get to that position, then I can drop my bridge hand over the line and then I can practice making straight strokes this way, okay? And you wanna practice going pretty far with your stroke hand because you wanna imagine as if you're following all the way through the cue ball. You're not just gonna practice doing little, little tiny strokes like this. You're gonna practice going all the way through um, with your cue stick, okay? Now, you should be able to do this consistently. You should be able to stand behind your line, see the line, and then drop into the shot with the bridge hand and the stick and go straight back and straight forward. And you should notice that if you were to look back 
okay? Your hand should be in line with your back foot, kind of towards the ball of your foot, um, and it should be perfectly in line like that. Now, when you go to apply that to your shot, you see the line that your cue ball needs to travel, whether you use a ghost ball or any other sort of aiming method, whatever you use. You're behind that line, you need to drop down into the shot, make sure the bridge is on that line that you see, do a couple practice rokes routine, make sure you build a practice routine in, and you execute by shooting the ball in, okay? Number one, make sure you're not moving around while you're down on your shot. Aiming happens while you're standing up. Okay, number two is we need to make sure that we are not hopping up and not moving the backhand around. And oftentimes this happens when we're popping up on our shot, right? So some people will come, and I call it body English. Sometimes people will try to um, help the ball go into the pocket by doing something like this, where they hop up and they throw their stick off to the side, everything like that. I'm giving a very, very exaggerated example. Um, but even though it is really exaggerated, I've seen shooters actually do exactly what I just did. Okay, so important thing to think about and, and the way to kind of approach your follow through and execution of the shot is when you shoot the shot, you shouldn't even move until after that ball is pocketed or maybe after the cue ball stops. And so let me give an example of that. So let's imagine I had the shot on the six ball and my next shot is, I don't know, let's say that two ball. I have the six ball, I'm behind my shot, I'm, I'm lining up for the shot while I'm standing. I'm gonna drop into my shot, do a couple practice strokes. I'm gonna execute the shot and I'm gonna wait for that the cue ball to set into place for my next shot. And then, you know, if I was gonna shoot the two ball, same thing, I get my, my shot pass standing up, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna execute the shot, and I'm not gonna move until I see that cue ball move. This is gonna, it's, it's, it's a very long wait time, but it's, some, it's a way to guarantee that you're not popping up off of your shot, okay? The popping up off of our shot is so crucial because what ends up happening usually is when you pop up, your stick is not going straight anymore because you're coming off the line. So you think you're hitting right where you're thinking, but you're not, and you end up hitting off, and you see right there I hit off to the side on accident. <clears throat> you're not actually hitting where you think you're gonna hit. And one of the things about pool, you need to build consistency in how you're stroking, how you're aiming, how your cue stick is going straight back and straight forth, because all these things play a factor into missing the ball. If you're popping up, well, maybe you were aimed right, but because you popped up, you missed the shot. And so then you go correcting things like how you aimed before the shot, even though it might not be that. So make sure that you stay down on the shot, you don't pop up, okay? And that kind of brings us into one of the things that's a problem with number three, which is unintentional English. Now, with a low deflection shaft, like a Predator, I use, a, uh, I use the Revo. This is the 11.8. I love how it fits in my hands. It's just, it's just perfect for me. Um, but when we use, when we're hitting uh, with a low deflection shaft, anytime you put English on it, you're, instead of actually changing the deflection of the shot, you're actually changing the shot path in general, okay? The reason why we can, w that we don't have, you don't have to have so much deflection on a shaft like this is because you don't have to use extreme English to get the, the cue ball to do the same thing. Um, so when I shoot this, I don't go really that far outside of a tip of center, okay? Because you don't need to, to to get around the table, okay? But what I see a lot of players do is they do this unintentionally. So they're down on the shot, they actually think they're hitting center when really they're hitting way off to the side. Um, one of the things that you can do to see if this is you as a player is we can take, I like to take a striped ball. Okay, you can do this. You can do this from long rail to long rail. I'm gonna do this from short rail. Okay, 
it's a lot easier going this direction because, well, it's a shorter path. Um, you're going to get the same feedback. It's just, uh, it's just going to be much faster. So I like doing it here. We use a, we use a striped ball. Okay, and your goal here is just to hit it straight up to the tenor, uh, the, straight up the table, and have it roll straight back to you. But one of the things that you'll notice when you shoot this ball immediately, and so we're going to take a look at this through the GoPro, is if you're off center at all, you watch the nine, especially the, the number nine in the circle where the nine ball re stays. Watch. If I hit it off to the center a little bit, you'll see that it spins on its side. And then when it's rolling straight again, it'll roll. You'll see each circle come back and forth on the same line. Okay. Let me do that the other way. You'll see it very, very clearly. It'll spin to the side. Right. And of course, you'll get the, the feedback of the ball off the rail. But... It's something that you see immediately. Sometimes players will will hit the rail and they'll come back to the stick because they'll accidentally put English on it, and so they'll hit to the left but use right. This will give you immediate feedback. Okay, okay. We want to practice this where the nine ball is rolling straight back and straight forth over itself. Okay, that number nine. Okay, I just find it's easier to see with a striped ball. Feel free to use a measles ball. You can see with the measles ball too. You know, with the measles ball, you're just looking for the three spots or the whatever, however many spots they are. You just want to make sure that they're going back and forth on the same line. And if you, if you, oops, if they're not, you'll see it very clearly. You'll see they'll spin sideways. They'll, the, the circle, the, the red spots on the ball will literally spin like this. And once they hit the, the rail and they're, they take whatever English, if you're looking at it, they'll spin like this over each other like this, wherever they are. Um, it's very, very clear actually to see. So now, one of, the, one of the exercises that you can do to get all of these things in line and build a really, really solid fundamental um, as long as you're practicing correctly is actually just to practice straight in shots. Straight in shots will help you, first of all, you can practice getting in line from standing. You can practice seeing, let me do a little bit. Okay. You can see the line easy, right? It's very easy to see a straight in shot line. It's hard to execute usually, um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of reason for that. But you can see the line easily, so you can practice dropping in on that line. Okay. You can practice staying down because when you sh execute the shot, you're gonna shoot and stop your stick and don't move until you, that ball is, the cue ball is stopped on the spot, right? And if you, do a, if you do a proper stop shot for this, you can see if the cue ball is spinning left or right, okay? And so let's give an example of this. So I'm behind my shot. I'm gonna step down into my shot, okay? I'm gonna take my couple practice strokes, okay? I'm gonna execute. Now, when I shot that, you can see the cue ball didn't spin left or right, okay? Now, watch what happens. If I execute this, but I use left or right, okay? I'm behind my shot. I'm going to drop into it. If I use any left or any right, watch what happens. Even though I pocketed the ball still, you can see that my cue ball is spinning as it hits the point, okay? That's not what you want for this exercise. You want to stay down until the shot is done, and you want that cue ball not spinning. You want that cue ball just to stop, okay? If it hits a little bit off, it might just drift a sec uh, like a little bit, like a, you know, not even a eighth of an inch, but as long as that cue ball is not going like this and rotating like this, then you're you're pretty much straight on, okay? Because obviously, if you have a little bit of an angle and you hit, you know, you hit to the one of the sides of the pocket, your cue ball might just go like this a little bit. But you just don't want this ball, you don't want this ball spinning as it makes contact, okay? Again, one aiming while you're standing, okay? Practice using the lines. Practice dropping in onto any one of the lines. Two, make sure that you're not popping up. Wait until the cue ball stops, unless obviously it's coming into the path of your shot, of your next shot. 
You don't want to wait until that cue ball comes back and hits you. You got to get out of the way. Anything like that, obviously, don't do that. And then make sure that we're hitting center ball. Practicing a straight ball, straight up and down the rail, and you'll see immediately if you're putting left or right on it on accident, okay? I hope this video was of use to you. If it was, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get more billiards content like this. Um, please leave any comments below on, on what you think of the video and maybe potential videos you'd like me to do in the future, okay? Again, I will be in uh, Vegas playing in APA Nationals for the Masters Tournament and Captain's Tournament um, at the beginning week of August from, I believe, the 7th through... Masters like 7th through the 10th, and then Captains is from the 9th through the 12th or something of that sort. Um, so if you guys are there, um, I'm going to try to keep you updated on where I'm playing and stuff like that. And so maybe I get to meet some of you guys there. Um, yeah, until, until then, we'll see you next time.